Hey guys, welcome to Bar Z. My name's Stan, and today we've got a little bit of a project. Uh, we're going to be doing some testing and some prototyping. <clears throat> and what we're going to do is we're going to attempt to add an argon injection to a hot shot. And uh, what, I've, what I've done is I've ordered in some hose here uh, from McMaster Car. And this side takes the CG type. I think that's a CG320 or CGA320. That's the acorn type. Uh, this is what fits in my flow meter on my uh, argon bottle on my TIG. So uh, I ordered in the fittings, the hose, and I made myself a hodgepodge. A uh, little set of crimping dies. I guess I got to work on those. They're not turning out too good. So um, I made my own hose. This is a 10 foot hose. So sh the hot shot should be able to reach the welding bottle from there. And this is all off the shelf stuff. Um, I brought it out to a, uh, a barbed nipple here, uh, which is a eighth inch NPT. And then for going down in the oven, this is the only piece I actually had to make. This is a street elbow here, but it's, uh, um, TIG welded to a piece of stainless steel tubing. And from the center of the thread <clears throat> out to the tip is two inch. So this is enough to go through the insulation of the oven. Uh, I'm going to drill and tap uh, the insulation quarter inch, so it's the same as the uh, OD of the tubing. And then I'm going to tap the sheet metal eighth inch pipe thread. There's no pressure here, so we don't worry about it really blowing out or anything like that. It's just to keep it firm. Um, and then this is a very thin wall tubing, but it's a 316 stainless steel tube. Okay. So that's the injection port. And then I've got two different tubings here to play with. I thought maybe I might need an orifice. There's the two that I got. One's a very heavy wall and one's a very thin wall. And I did a little bit of pre-testing and I flowed some argon through this uh, thin, or the thick wall with the little tiny hole. That's about a 62 thousandths hole. And it, it kind of sprays the argon in a in a jet and the the thin wall tubing just kind of flows out and creeps everywhere so i went ahead and went with the uh with the thin wall tube so uh we're gonna drill and tap uh <laughs> the hodgepodge 360 which is right over here this is my test oven that's my uh little test unit right there so we're going to drill and tap we're going to go uh dead center of the lid right in the top and just let it creep over the parts argon's heavier than oxygen so it'll travel top to bottom and uh, fill the oven um i got the math for a, a 360 cubic inch oven over on my bench let me go grab it i'll come right back and i'm going to share the math with you as to flow rates and how much argon we're going to be using Okay, well, I've got a little cheat sheet here that I made. Uh, I started off, I don't know why I think those bottles are always 120. They're, one, they're 125 cubic foot bottles. And that's the same size as I got over there, right there on the on the TIG and on the MIG for that reason. That's carbon, di uh, that's carbon dioxide, but the, uh, the TIG is 100% argon. <clears throat> so let's look at the math here. Uh, we're basing everything on... 125 cubic foot bottles. Um, first of all, the oven is 360 cubic inches, and we need to convert that to cubic feet. So it's 0 0.208 cubic feet. At five cubic feet an hour of flow rate, we end up with 24 air changes within the oven. At 2.5 cubic feet per hour, we end up with 12 air changes in the oven. Uh, and then at one cubic foot an hour, we come up with 4.8 air changes. Um, I think the 5 and the 2.5 are going to be way too much. Uh, remember, when we start putting in cold gas into a hot oven, uh, we're making the oven work extra hard. So that's, uh, that's another thing to think about. And another thing to think about is uh, are we going to create a cold spot inside the oven, you know, wherever we're putting this gas in. All right, uh, let's see how long the bottle's going to last. You know, at 125 cubic foot uh, bottle, at the, at the high flow rate, at 5 cubic feet an hour, 
Uh, it'll run for 25 hours at that flow rate. And then here it is for 2.5 cubic feet in it cubic feet an hour it'll run for 50 hours obviously double and then uh, where we're going to be probably going to be testing is about one cubic feet an hour of flow rate that's 125 hours of runtime off of a 125 cubic foot bottle and that's going to put us at 4.8 air changes now that's you know that's all the math that i did preliminary math and it's pretty interesting because let's go over and look at a flow meter let me cut the camera and we're going to go look at that uh, flow meter over on my TIG. Okay, I'm just handheld here. And you see our, our this is all CFH right here. Cubic feet an hour of flow rate on a, just a regular welding type uh, um, regulator. And let's turn this on first. And let's turn down our volume here. Okay, we're, we're on with the tank. And if you look down there... I'm just going to crack this needle just so that ball starts coming up. Right there is 5 cubic feet an hour. Top of the balls to that very first increment. Excuse me, right? There, here we go. Which is, that's quite a bit of flow actually. So that's that's kind of a lot. So we'll probably do a pre-purge right at, right at 5. And then just turn it down just so that ball comes off the seat. You just want it just barely creeping into that oven. It's not going to take much to keep that oven depleted after it's purged. It's not going to take that much. So, and then when we turn the rag down, we see that ball just completely disappear. So it's not a great gauge for that. I've found some gauges from Dwyer uh, that I've ordered in one that uh, has a range of uh, zero to three cubic feet an hour so I've ordered in one of those they're not expensive gauges it's a it's a clear plastic similar to this with a ball I think the ball is like styrofoam or something it's, it's not much but I've ordered in one of those so I might do like an auxiliary hose over here and hang that gauge to the side with a valve on it so I can switch back and forth between oven and welding all right but uh, these gauges aren't really suited for doing uh, really low uh, uh, flow rates you know we're gonna see how it works at uh, at at the we're gonna guess at one and see how it works uh, before my uh, new gauge comes in all right okay our test group today is gonna be uh, some O1 use some uh, squares that I need to make anyway so we might as well use them for a, a test group but that way we're all the same material and all the these are all the same thickness you know, I've already thinned the webs. I still need to pocket, do the pocket milling. That's why they're uh, blued up. So I got to do layouts and cut out the pockets and, and get these squares ready to harden. You know, I'll get that done, and then we're going to move on to testing. Uh, but here's everything I, you know, everything that I bought for making these hoses, McMaster. You know, uh, it's a CGA. Oh, here's a CGA number. It's an 032 is what my bottle takes for. Uh, that fitting there, that's the acorn style fitting. Uh, it's CGA 32, uh, hose fitting for compressed gas, so you get you gotta buy the nut and the fitting separately. Uh, then the hose, uh, I got 20 feet of hose, so I made two 10 foot hoses. The crimp on ferrules for the welding hose, stainless steel barb fittings, and uh, miniature threaded pipe fitting. Apparently a couple of these Wow, they cause cancer. Hmm. Uh, everything that's marked stainless uh, contains nickel, so it that'll give you cancer. This this will, but you know the hose and the the, the ferrule won't. But the, that that stainless steel fitting will cause cancer. All right, so everything's available from McMaster Car um, to make these things. It's uh, pretty simple, you know. And this is all the best laid plans. We're gonna. Uh, give it a crack and see how how we do. Uh, let me get those milled and I'll bring you back. Okay, well we got our parts all milled out. We got all the pocket milling done, and or I guess you call it frame milling. Uh, and I ran them. I went ahead and ran them over a uh, surface belt on the belt sander, which is like a Scotch Bite belt. So I ran these over just to give them a little polish, just to kind of clean them up. I mean, it's still. It doesn't remove material. It really doesn't throw sparks. It softens the edges and just gives it a 
little polish, but you can still see the mill uh, marks in there. The tip of the light can catch it. So these are these are done. Some are monogrammed, some aren't. Uh, there's a do-it-yourself kit in here, so those those do not get monogrammed. But uh, we're going to use some of these for uh, uh, testing, you know, and we're going to use this as a test base and a baseline. So we're going to do everything's been done identical, identical material, all came off the same bar stock, um, all milled the same, all polished the same, all everything's identical in every way. So nothing here is a variable. Well, here we are with the test oven. This is the HodgePodge 360. This is the very first one I ever built. And uh, the reason there's so many holes in it is because it's been taken apart and put together so many times with so many different things that I've tried. Different door latches, different things. And you will notice it's also screwed together so I can take it apart easier. All right, we're going to uh, we're gonna pick a six inch for our location here. And then the width of our oven should be 10, yep. So we're gonna go to five on that. That's our location right there uh, for putting in, a, putting in an injector. So let's get it drilled. Okay. Okay, all that's left to do is attach the hose. I'm going to use a little bit of uh, Loctite uh, silver grade anti seize. This comes in like a chapstick tube, which is actually pretty cool. It's way less messy. I'm going to let this anti seize create a bit of a seal. On the threads, uh, there's really no pressure there, but I don't want it leaking out, and it'll prevent a seizure. Uh, when assembling stainless against stainless, it's a very real possibility that the two could weld themselves together. So let's get this uh, hose on with our little bit of NACs. It'll take the temperature too, and it'll take the heat. Should be a lot easier if I had a swivel there. That's a future design change there. A little swivel at the end of that hose. If this works, maybe we'll uh, get some hoses made up. All right, this thing's ready to run. Okay, we're set. We've got our, our hose connected to our bottle over here. I kind of made it so you can see the bottle and the, and the oven too. Uh, let's find out what we did in this oven last. Uh, we're going to push and hold P. And we're going to go to the PTOL menu, which is right there. Our first temperature is 60 degrees, which is our starting point. Our first time segment is 120 minutes. Uh, event 1 is off. Set point 1 is 1,500 degrees. So it's going to take 120 minutes to ramp up from 60 to 1,500. Uh, looks like uh, time set is 20 minutes for two, segment 2. Event is off. Uh, set point two is again 1500, so that's our soak. So we're soaking for 20 minutes. And uh, our next time segment is uh, one minute. We've got an A1 alarm, so it'll sound the alarm. And again at 1500. Uh, next up, our time segment is set to zero, so the, it'll shut the controller down. So that is the recipe I use for. Uh, 01 tool steel 120 minutes ramp up 20 minutes soak sound an alarm quench 
So we're uh, good to go and get, get this thing running. Let me go back to the main menu. And what I do, I've got, I do them in pairs. And these are hanging on a, a piece of nickel welding rod. So it's a nice high temperature rod. So I'm going to do them in pairs. I'm just going to set them on the floor inside the oven and uh, start a purge, you know. i make it so I can, I'm going to put that little wire thing facing forward so I can get on it. Get a pair of pliers and yank quickly because I don't want, uh, I want to get it in the oil as soon as possible. We're going to, let's start a purge. I'm going to go, I'm going to go five cubic feet an hour. Right there, my little red ball's right at the top of the five, so I'm just going to let that run at five cubic feet an hour while it's ramping up. At these low temperatures, it doesn't make any difference at all. I mean, you could go even more just to get your purge over with. There's 15, you know, get, your, get that gas out of there. Now, the hot shot's got enough ventilation around the doors and around the open corners in the back that the argon's going to creep out. Not very much, but it will creep out. Uh, let's start our let's start our program. Execute program equals yes. Run equals yes. And we've started at 60. We're going to enable heat. And uh, just let her start ramping up. You know, it's going to it's going to be two hours for that thing to ramp up. After about a minute, I'm going to turn that gas down. Right now, here I'll move the camera over there so you can see what the where I've got it set at. I've got it at about 15, but it's just as simple as turning this guy down. But I'm gonna let it sit there and run for about a minute at 15 cubic feet an hour, and then I'm gonna take, pull it way down. I'm just gonna run it down here, just below five. That's where I'm gonna, that's where I'm gonna run this. I'm gonna run the whole thing at, uh, I'm, tr I'm shooting for one, but one's way down where I can't even see it. I'm going to try the whole test at uh, 5 cubic feet an hour. But we're purging now, so I'm going to leave it at 15 for another probably 30, 40 seconds. Okay, I gave it time to do its purge, and now i got it turned down. Top of the ball is right at point, or at 5 cubic feet an hour. And so I've let it purge, and I'm going to pull it back even more. Just let that drop just slightly. I need a more sensitive flow meter. Um, I've, I've found some uh, Dwyer instruments, D-W-Y-E-R, Dwyer in Michigan, has some very high resolution uh, flow meters, so I'm going to pick up one of those. And you can see where it's slowly climbing. This is a two hour climb, so you see the green display is changing, and the red is the actual inside the oven, and it's just ramping it up. So we're ramping up to 1500 over a two hour uh, duration. So I'll see you in two hours. Uh, what I want to make sure of is that the oven made made temperature fine with that cold gas going in there. We want to make sure the oven actually makes temperature. And I'm going to set up my quench oil on a table or something kind of down here. So I pull my parts and they go straight in the oil because that time, because they're red hot, and that time it takes to get them into the oil is time they're exposed to oxygen. So I need to get them submerged as quickly as possible. So that is the goal. So I'll bring you back in a couple hours and see how we're doing. There's your 1500. And now it's gonna maintain that 1500 uh, starting right now. It just reached its, uh, the timer just started the 20 minute soak. Uh, my quench oil is made by Quench All. That's the, that's the brand name. It is a, this is a slow quench. It's a 27 second quench. I use this for very thin parts. They do also have a, a fast quench, which I use for thicker parts. And I've preheated my oil. I've got a piece of uh, scrap in here that I heat up with a torch and dropped it in just to take the edge off the oil. And my oil is probably, I don't know, it's warm enough you can keep your finger in it. Probably about 125, 135, somewhere in there. So it's, it's warm, you know, and it's just the right temperature for heat treating. Uh, you know, if you... If you've got a cold shop and the oil's sitting here in the cold, you know, and you've got 40 or 50 degree oil, preheat it, you'll shock your parts. 
and risk cracking. Okay, so we've started our 20 minute timer. Uh, we're coming up in 20 minutes. We're ready to uh, uh, quench this thing. I'm going to get my gear on. I'm going to put on a leather apron because splashing hot oil on you uh, hurts. I'm going to be wearing gloves and a face shield. So uh, anyone that handles any type of red hot parts, you need to be very careful and uh, use caution around these ovens and around the hot parts. Okay, well we got a timer and it's time to pull our parts. Okay guys, our video is running kind of long. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do this in a two-part series and I'm going to show you all the results and everything I did to uh, harden up parts and the effects of the argon on uh, on a hot shot. All right, uh, we'll see you in part two.